Football Friday edition of Focal Point on AFR Talk. I'm Brian Fisher, your congenial, convivial, and amiable host. As always, great to have you in the conversation. We'll open up the phone lines a little bit early today and get you in on the conversation just as soon as we can. Had an opportunity just about an hour ago to be on Fox News Live with Lauren Green. She's got a program called Spirited Debate, which really deals with religious liberty issues. She was interviewing me about our recommendation, AFA's recommendation, that churches and families get out of scouting because of its embrace of homosexuality. And you can hear a portion of my interview with her. Uh, Jeff Reed recorded that. We just have audio of it. I think they'll have probably video posted up at the website when they do. We'll get that link up uh, out on Twitter. We'll get the link up on our Focal Point Facebook page. Don't forget, if you're not signed up on my Twitter feed, Brian J. Fisher, Brian with a Y. Got to have the middle initial J. Fisher, F-I-S-C-H-E-R. Got to have the C in there, just like the chess champion. And also our uh, Facebook page is Focal Point. So just go to your Facebook account, put in Focal Point, it'll pop right up. Now, one of the interesting things about reading the book of Nehemiah, which I've been doing and meditating on, is it's really a story about the same project in which you and I are engaged, in which AFA and this listening audience are engaged, and that is restoring a nation to its former greatness restoring a nation to its former values. Now, we see here in Chapter 4 what happens when, when people set out to do it. They set out to restore what's been broken down and to reclaim what has been lost and to rebuild what has been destroyed. You know, you would think somebody comes back and they want to do something good for a country. They want to get back to the founding principles that made it the greatest nation on the earth. Everybody would stand around and applaud, and they would want to know what they can do to help. Not so. Here's what Nehemiah and his crew experienced. Now, when... Sanballat, who was one of his persistent adversaries, he's like the Mikey Weinstein of the uh, 5th century B.C. Now, when Sanballat heard what we were building, the wall, he was angry and greatly enraged. And he jeered at the Jews, and he said in the presence of his brothers and of the army of Samaria, what are these feeble Jews doing? Will they restore it for themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they finish up in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of rubbish and burned ones at that? Tobiah the Ammonite, he was another persistent adversary, was beside him, and he said, yes, what they are building, if a fox goes up on it, he will break down their stone wall. So you have a combination here of how the, the enemy reacts, how our political adversaries, our spiritual adversaries, how they react when we begin to make progress on restoring America to its moral foundations. They get angry. They are outraged. This has been their turf. They have taken turf back from the sight of truth, from the sight of light, from the sight of the gospel, from the sight of Christianity. They've taken that turf. They've captured it. They've, they've snatched it away. And now we're here to take it back, and it enrages them. They are outraged that we would be working to restore America to the principles that made it great. And they jeer and they mock and they ridicule. You know, if you want to guarantee the fact that you'll have everybody from pillar to post laughing at you, making fun of you, ridiculing you, just take a stand on your Facebook page. I mean, our team knows about that from what happens on their own personal Facebook pages. When they put an entry up there that simply stands for the truth, the way they get assaulted and the way they get ridiculed, and the way they get attacked. And the same thing has happened all down through history. We should not be surprised that that's happening to us. Now, here's how Nehemiah responds. Verse 4, Hear, O God, for we are despised. Turn back their taunt on their own heads and give them up to be plundered in a land where they are captive. Do not cover their guilt. Do not let their sin be blotted out from your sight, for they have provoked you to anger in the presence of the builders. So in other words, what Nehemiah does in response to all this jeering, all of this taunting, all of this anger, what does he do? He prays. He says, hear, O God, our prayer, and cause their evil to turn back on their own heads. That's a perfectly appropriate prayer to pray. If somebody is mistreating us, treating us unjustly, then it's certainly appropriate to say, God, I'm just asking for justice here. Do to them what they have done and are doing to me. All that is, is a request for justice, and God will see that justice is done. So Nehemiah didn't get pulled off stride by the jeering. I mean, that can, you you know, if if it hasn't happened to you before, it can rattle you pretty good. 
when you get this anger and this hostility and this ridicule, do not let that knock you off stride and off course. Set your face like a flint to stand in the gap, to rebuild the wall where God's put you to work, and don't be deterred by the resistance and the hostility that you get. Instead, the way you respond to that hostility is prayer. Refer that to God. Ask him to take care of it while you stay on task. And so Nehemiah says, verse 6, we built the wall. All the wall was going joined together to half its height for the people out of mind to work. And then they ran into a mid-wall crisis. Got half the thing built, and the enemy, seeing the enormous progress, redoubled their efforts and their uh, hostility. Uh, when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabs and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the repairing of the walls of Jerusalem was going forward and that the breaches were beginning to be closed because God's people were standing in the gap, they were repairing the breaches, they were building up the broken walls, they were very angry. Think they were angry before? Now they were absolutely furious. And they all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem to cause confusion in it. So what does Nehemiah do? We prayed to our God and we set a guard as a protection against them day and night. So they continued the work with a trowel in one hand and a sword in the other. One hand had a work implement. The other hand had a weapon for defense. And notice it says what Nehemiah, we prayed and we set a guard. It wasn't one or the other. It was we prayed, we trusted God, and we armed ourselves. So what we did is we counted upon, if it was in, uh, in America, the way we would put it, we depend upon God and the Second Amendment. I remember one time having a guy come by our house in, in Idaho, wanted to sell us a security system. And I said, well, I already got a security system. And he said, well, what's that? I said, God and a loaded gun. That's how Nehemiah went about it. We prayed and we set a guard. So it's both and, not uh, either or. Well, let's go to prayer for ourselves and for our land. Lord God Almighty, I pray that you will move among us as you moved among your people in Nehemiah's time, that we too may care deeply about our city and our nation, go to work to repair and rebuild our culture according to your will, and turn the heart of our people back to you. I pray that by your spirit, you will prompt us to work with all our heart, that the work may go ahead and the gaps be closed. As your people seek to rebuild, Lord, we know that there will be those who become angry and incensed at our efforts and will ridicule us. They will accuse us of being feeble, will plot together to fight against us and stir up trouble against us. I pray that you will hear our prayers when we are despised and insults are thrown in our faces. Turn the insults of our enemies on their own heads. Do not cover up their guilt or blot out their sins from your sight. Show us how to pray in those times and how to respond in practical ways to meet their threats. Please frustrate their plans. Grant us renewed energy when our strength begins to give out. Give us perseverance in the face of discouragement, especially when it comes from friends. I pray that we will not be afraid, but remember that you are a great and awesome God. May we fight for our brothers, our sons, our daughters, our wives, and our homes. In the name of Jesus, we ask you to fight for us. Amen. As a business owner, you know the importance.